Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Nadia and this is the place where we get real. And today we are having another very relaxed, very chit chatty video because I, I have a rant incoming. It is a sex based rant. It is a pleasure based rant. It is going to help you have more sex, like a lot more sex. And it's going to help you have way hotter sex. And you're going to be able to use this kind of little hack or tip or whatever you want to call it, like immediately moving forward. So this is important for anyone who cares about their sex life. Um, so let's get into it. It's unedited chit chatty <laughs> sex rant time. Um, so many of you that have followed me for a while will know that I am a sex columnist. I've been a sex columnist um, for a popular Australian news site for many years now and I've been writing about sex for over a decade. And I got into writing about sex just as an average woman talking about my sex life. I am not a sex therapist and I'm not any kind of a medical doctor and I'm always careful to say that in all of my videos so that you guys are super clear if you have any kind of medical questions or you know therapy related questions you should seek out a, a medical or mental health care professional to talk to about that I'm always speaking from the perspective of an average woman but obviously over the years of writing about sex I've learned a lot more than what the average person knows about sex I've read all the new studies all the new research um, as it's come out about sex and relationships. And another sort of, I guess, interesting part of this job is that people write to me, a lot of people write to me, hundreds if not thousands of people have written to me over the years and confess to me over email or over DMs um, and even sometimes here on YouTube, um, very, very intimate details of their sex life. And I think people feel maybe safe doing that because they're behind a screen, they can't see me, and because I talk so openly about sex, it in a way gives people permission to be open about their own sex lives, which I really love. But I have talked on here before as well about the fact that I always find it quite interesting and surprising and almost a little strange that people feel more confident talking to me, essentially a stranger on the internet. I know many of you um, you know, have kind of gotten to know me and a lot about me um, over the years if you've been following my work for a while. But essentially, you know, in many ways, we're strangers. And um, it's interesting that people feel more confident sending me emails telling me really intimate details about their sex lives than they do talking to their own partners. This is one of the things, out of everything that I get sent to me, this is one of the things that really strikes me the most. And because we don't talk, to our own partners about sex, this creates a lot of misunderstandings. And I think one of the greatest misunderstandings, something which has become sort of like a learned truth, um, but which is very much a falsehood, it's very much a lie, um, that so many of us believe because of the fact we do not talk to our own partners about sex and pleasure, is this idea that over time, women lose interest in sex and that it's very normal um, and natural and that it, it pretty much happens to all women that we, we get into relationships and then we just lose interest in sex. And that in general, women just aren't very sexual people. Now this lie is so powerful and it's so pervasive that it's not just men who are partnered with women that believe it, but women themselves believe this lie. Women convince themselves, yeah, this is normal. Like, I just don't have interest in sex. This just happens to all women. Because, you know, women will hear their friends say things like, oh gosh, I have to have sex with my husband again. Like, it's his birthday. I really should give him sex. Or it's been a while, so I guess I should do it. And this lie is really powerful. It's so powerful. It's so powerful that I've spoken to other, you know, people that have followed this channel for a while will know that I came out about a year ago as gay, as a lesbian. And a lot of people have said to me, you know, how could you not realize you were a lesbian for all these years? You've written like lots of stories and made lots of videos talking very graphically about having sex with men. How were you able to essentially like have sex, so much sex with men? and not realize that you're a lesbian. You know, I make videos and I've, I've done stories as well where I've talked about, you know, really enjoying 
sucking on a dick or um, you know riding a dick how could I do that if I was a lesbian well it all relates back to this lie and since coming out I've spoken to many other late bloomer lesbians late bloomer is just the term that we use for women who come out later in life after having long-term serious relationships with men and and this is quite common by the way and it's quite common because of this lie and these women all say that they fell prey to believing this lie as well which is this idea that women don't really enjoy sex and that because we don't we have to fake it and perform it for our male partners but in some respect we perform it for everyone around us and i got so good at performing enjoying sex and loving sex with men that it became almost a character that i started to play out in my stories when i wrote my columns and here on youtube and you know it's actually very hard for me to admit that to you guys because for me to admit that means that some if not a lot of what you watched over the years or consumed on my social media or in my columns was a lie it was a performance and in knowing that maybe you feel now like you can't really trust me and I get that which is why it was like a really big deal for me to come out um, and you know a lot of people sort of you know I guess people that don't like me said oh were well, you just doing this for attention or to jump on a bandwagon but it couldn't have been more opposite because actually I risked kind of losing my audience um, in admitting this truth because yeah, a lot of you guys would probably feel a little bit cheated. But it was important for me to tell this because telling this wasn't just about having a, you know, a relatable, maybe slightly different story of coming out because I hadn't seen so many stories like mine, but it was also to talk about this, this idea of this performative pleasure and this idea of women uh, accepting this, this notion that we simply just don't really enjoy sex. So I accepted that notion in my relationships for a long time, that sex was just something that, you know, I wasn't really into as a woman and you know I'd hear my friends say it as well and so I believed it and my friends believed it and my friends male partners believed this lie as well you know women they get into serious relationships or they get married and they just lose interest in sex and like I say this is so powerful that we we don't even realize there are some women out there who are gay like myself that don't realize the reason I'm not enjoying sex is because I don't want to be having sex with men I want to be having sex with women um, and obviously this isn't the case for all women. There are lots of straight women out there who very much do want to be having sex with men, but they're not enjoying the sex they're having. So I want to break this down. This is a lie because one thing I've learned over the years in this job from reading all of the studies and from having women make very intimate confessions to me in emails is that women are very very horny like women are so horny you guys so horny all of the research backs this up and everything that i hear from women when they you know confess things to me online in emails and dms is women are really really horny the same women who will say oh you know i think i've lost my libido because i just don't really feel like having sex with my boyfriend anymore i don't really feel like having sex with my husband anymore these same women when i ask them well do you watch porn do you masturbate? They'll say, oh, yeah, definitely. When I'll say to them, if there's a really hot guy on the street, you know, like jogging past shirtless or something, do you notice him and check him out? And they'll say, oh, gosh, of course. Yeah, of course I do. So I'll say, well, kind of sounds like you are horny. You're just not horny for your husband or your boyfriend. And women never stop to actually think about this because we just readily believe this lie that well, women don't really want sex. We just give sex to get into a relationship and then once we get the relationship, we lose the interest in sex. And some women very sadly will actually convince themselves, well, I'm broken. I need to go and get fixed. I need to go and get some medication or some treatment or something to fix my broken libido. How can I fix my broken libido? And they never stop to think that actually their libido is not broken. They haven't lost it. You can't lose your sex drive, like misplacing like 
your favorite t-shirt or something it's that's not how sex drive works it's just that your partner is not igniting it for you anymore and yes for some women the reason that they go oh i just don't really have an interest in sex is because they don't want to be with men they want to be with women but we get so so brainwashed by this lie that we don't actually stop to think well is there another reason maybe that i don't feel like having sex with my partner and yes there can be many other reasons and the least common reason is that women just aren't very horny or that women lose their libido when they get into relationships so many women nearly as many women as men according to all of the studies and the research go and have affairs sexual affairs these are women who are not having sex with their boyfriends they are not having sex with their husbands and all of a sudden they're having all of this hot sex with this lover on the side so clearly there's nothing wrong with these women's sex drives they're just not getting it turned on in the relationship so now let's go to how you can be having more sex in your relationship so if you are right now a woman who has convinced yourself, yeah, I'm just not really into sex, or I think I lost my libido, or I think my sex drive is broken, I want you to start maybe considering that that's not actually the truth. That you have it, but that your partner is no longer igniting it. And if you're a man watching this right now who's in a relationship and you're like, you know, my wife or my girlfriend, she just never wants to have sex with me, like, I just don't understand, like, what am I doing wrong? Um, is this just, you know, is this the best it can ever get? I want to say to you, no, you can be having so much more sex. Your female partner is so horny. Your and I hate to give you this hard truth, but you are just not doing it for her. Okay, so now let's get to what you need to do. The number one thing women need to get sexually excited and turned on is First of all, it's feeling seen and heard and so many women out there right now in their relationships or in their dating life do not feel seen and heard by their partners. They don't feel that their partners take a genuine interest in their life, in the interior of their life, in what's going on. And it's also for novelty. Research has proven that women actually need more novelty than men in order to maintain sexual interest. And what tends to happen when we get into a long-term relationship is we get into a bit of monotony and predictability um, because that is part of the parcel of what happens to a long-term relationship. So if you don't mix things up and have some novelty in there, your partner will get bored and stop wanting sex. So how can you have novelty? Date nights are such a simple and easy way to have novelty. Surprise your partner, organize a date, give your partner an excuse to feel sexy and to feel seen by you know inviting them out to something that means they have to get really dressed up and that you can pay a lot of attention to how sexy and fabulous and amazing they look and also go back to doing those novel things that you used to do when you were very first dating or just when you were a horny teenager things that actually aren't sex but that arouse thoughts of sex things like long passionate kissing things like holding extended eye contact there have been a ton of study studies done to show that most married couples can go up to a week, a week without holding extended eye contact with each other. And extended eye contact is a great way to get your partner in the mood for sex because it makes a woman feel seen. And so many women I talk to talk about not feeling seen and heard and listened to and understood by their partners. So it's about actually taking the time to find out what interests your partner, what your partner is into. It's about doing a lot of things that actually aren't sexual at all, but that are going to make your partner feel more sexual. Also things like sexting your partner throughout the day, sending your partner a text, talking about the last time you accidentally walked in on them in the shower and how amazing their body looked, or the last time you had sex, even if it's been months since you had sex, just talk about how sexy and amazing their body felt, how wet they felt, how great their kiss felt, um, how amazing their moan sounded. Text them throughout the day to build that sense of anticipation and make them feel really sexy and seen and desired. These are things that lead to sex and they're simple things and they're things that a lot of men in 
straight relationships just aren't doing and you can start doing it today. And if you're a woman, these are things that you can start asking for from your partner today. And if your partner isn't willing to do these things, consider the fact that this is potentially not the right relationship for you. Um, because sex at the end of the day, unless you are asexual and your partner's asexual or you've come to some sort of an agreement on this, sex is an incredibly fundamental part of a happy, healthy, sex, successful relationship. And if you are constantly sexually frustrated in your relationship and not being sexually fulfilled, you might need to consider the very uncomfortable fact that this is not the right relationship for you. And if it's not, that's okay. Like do the work on it first, have a discussion with your partner, do these things to reinvigorate it. But if that does not work, consider the fact that maybe this isn't the right relationship for you and it's time to be in a relationship with someone that you're actually sexually compatible with. Um, it took me many, many years and a lot of relationships with men and some relationships with women until I found a situation where I found someone that I was super duper sexually compatible with. So keep at it and you will find that person too. But obviously, hopefully try those things first and that will help. I hope that gave you some insight. Um, if you happen to be new here, make sure you subscribe because I do videos like this all the time, every single week. And uh, yeah, I hope you all enjoyed this. It was just a random chit chatty one, but I hope I've been able to give you some insight and I will see you all in the next video. Love y'all. Lots and lots. Mwah.